Jacob G. Hornberger is founder and president of the Future of Freedom Foundation. He was born and raised in Laredo, Texas, and received his BA in economics from Virginia Military Institute and his law degree from the University of Texas. He was a trial attorney for 12 years in Texas. He also was an adjunct professor at the University of Dallas, where he taught law and economics. In 1987, Mr. Hornberger left the practice of law to become director of programs at the Foundation for Economic Education in Everton on Hudson, New York, publisher of The Freeman. In 1989, Mr. Hornberger founded the Future of Freedom Foundation. He is a regular writer for the Foundation's publication, Freedom Daily. Fluent in Spanish and conversant in Italian, he has delivered speeches and engaged in debates and discussions about free market principles with groups all over the United States, as well as Canada, England, Europe, and Latin America, including Brazil, Cuba, Bolivia, Mexico, Costa Rica, and Argentina. Here are a few edited clips of Jacob G. Hornberger's speech at the Future of Freedom Foundation's June 2008 conference entitled Restoring the Republic 2008 Foreign Policy and Civil Liberties. Nice to have you here. I'm Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation. Uh, as many of you know, uh, FFF is a, uh, a nonprofit educational foundation. Our mission since our inception in 1989 has been to present an uncompromising moral, philosophical, and economic case for the free society. If one must put a label on what we are, we are pure libertarians at the Future of Freedom Foundation. Um, the philosophy of this conference is that, and the reason we decided to have a follow-up conference on the same subject, is that, as everyone here knows, these are the two burning issues of our time, foreign policy and civil liberties. It's impossible to achieve a free society and this is what many advocates of liberty do not understand. It is impossible to achieve a free society without addressing what is going on with respect to foreign policy and civil liberties and putting our nation on the right track with respect to these two subjects. It's not one that makes Americans comfortable because they're so enamored with the idea of big government, big empire, sole remaining empire in the world, superpower that it's very difficult to, for them to think in terms of a limited government republic, the type of society our founding fathers call for, individual freedom, free markets, no standing military force, no militarism, no empire. And that's what this conference is all about. Now, there's a lot of people that could be speaking at this conference. There are, it's a relatively small band of people that are battling for civil liberties, battling for the, for the principles of the Bill of Rights, battling against these, these kangaroo tribunals in, in Guantanamo Bay, saying that this is not what America stands for, battling against interventionism in foreign policies. A lot of people could have been speaking at this conference. Many of you that are in this audience that are not lined up as speakers could be speaking. We had a limited amount of time. But let me tell you something about these speakers as well as the people in this movement, conservatives, liberals, and libertarians that are battling to restore the, the principles of liberty on which this country was founded. These are the vanguard of the people that are fighting hard to restore the founding principles of this country. These are your Sakharovs. These are your Solzhenitsyns. These are your dissidents that are devoting their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to the dismantling of this wall, this federal government wall. And how are they doing that, and how are we going to accomplish this task? Through the dissemination of ideas. What we're doing at this conference, and what you do with your friends and neighbors and people across this country, you share ideas. They kept telling those dissidents behind that Berlin Wall, you don't have a chance. The Soviet Empire is too powerful, has all the guns. And they just kept talking about liberty. They talked about Mises and Hayek and Friedman and ideas on liberty, and they kept disseminating them until those ideas brought down that wall peacefully. And the exact same thing can happen here. That's why they're so scared 
by that Ron Paul revolution because they see that ideas on liberty are going from person to person to person and people are breaking through and they're saying, oh, I see what you guys have been saying all these years about foreign policy and what the government's been doing to people overseas and, and what a real patriotism is all about and standing for what's right. I understand what you're talking about, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. And once they achieve that breakthrough, there's no turning back. And that's what scares the neocons and the establishment, the mainstream journalists and, and the rest of those statists. They're scared to death there's going to be a rebirth of liberty that's going to ignite the hearts and minds of the people of this country. If we stick with our principles, if we continue sharing these ideas with our friends and neighbors and family, I have absolutely no doubts that it is the destiny of the American people to break free of this darkness and lead the world into the light lead the world into the highest reaches of freedom that mankind has ever seen. Thank you very much. So I'd like to ask you and any of the other speakers, if you could, what are the concrete steps we can do to make a change? You know, right now we're stuck between voting for the right-wing collectivist or the left-wing collectivist, or casting a um, uh, protest vote for Ron Paul or, or Bob Barr. What else is there we can do? Yeah, I've been hit with that question uh, for, uh, gosh, 20 some odd years I've been in the libertarian movement. I wish I'd come up with a good answer because then I could start you know, copywriting and sell it. Um, my, my feeling is this, this is the way I finally come out on this thing, is that there is no central plan for freedom. It's that nobody's going to be able to come up with a perfect plan on how do we achieve it. Um, what I, what, the way I answer that question when anybody asks me is I say, look, the best thing you can ever do is what Leonard Reed, the founder of the Foundation for Economic Education, said is work on yourself. Do what you're doing. You go to these conferences, you educate yourself, and the idea is that that makes you a better advocate of these principles. Now, what do you do then when you become a better advocate of these principles? That's something that each person has to figure out for himself because you know what you're interested in. You know what your talents are, your abilities. I don't know. I can't tell you this is what you should do. You've got to figure that out. That could be running for public office. That could be writing letters to the editor. I mean, I know a guy that writes so many letters to the editors, and most of them are never published, but he hits every so often. Uh, it could be supporting candidates, supporting think tanks, uh, educational foundations. It could be things that I'm not even listing here that I haven't even thought of. Most important, it involves the dissemination of the ideas to which you're subscribing. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. There's a power of ideas that we can't measure. That once you, all you got to do is inject them into the marketplace, which means sharing them with someone else. That could be a family member. You know, you may get ostracized at Thanksgiving dinner or something, you know, like we all do by family members when we talk about these things. But by sharing those ideas, you plant the seed in their minds of, hey, this is what, now I'm not saying being obnoxious, you know. But with everybody sharing ideas and doing their own thing, running for office, supporting Ron Paul, supporting the Libertarian Party, whatever that may be, then when freedom ultimately is restored to this country, it will be the results of human action, not of human design, to coin the words of Friedrich Hayek. Uh, so it's not a result of a central plan. It's the consequence of everybody in this room doing what he thinks is best to advance liberty because he himself knows what he's best capable of doing. Thank you.